is a comfort to my soul. Your word is the truth that sets me free. Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk, as we continue on in our study of the letter of James, uh, going into the third chapter of, of the letter of James. I, I pray that you've had the opportunity to watch it. If not, you can go back and the entire study is now, what's been done is uh, available on Bible Talk, and the whole study will be available on Bible Talk once we're completed along with all of the other many studies that we have there. Many, many studies. Yeah, so we really invite you to go see that and use it. Um, we'll start right now. I'm going to ask Alice to pray and ask God's blessing on our time together before we get too far in. Hallelujah. Father, we do. We praise you. We bless you. We thank you. We thank you for your word, your word that is was made flesh and who saved us, gave us eternal life and reconciliation to you, your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask that the word that was, we'll speak today will be anointed by you and the Holy Spirit will guide and direct everything that we do and say. Amen. 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 All right, as I said, we're starting in uh, the third chapter of James. So we're going to start with James 3.1. So let me put on my glasses and get ready to read. Here we go. All right. Uh, James 3 1 says, Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we will incur a stricter judgment. How strict a judgment will you incur by being a teacher? And by the way, you know, it's God that has to appoint you as a teacher. For the Lord has appointed in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Mm -hmm. It seems to me there's an awful lot of self-appointed in all of those categories. Uh, you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to do that. Seems to me like everybody that has a Facebook account has become a teacher. Uh, and Facebook, the purpose of Facebook seems to be to make friends. That's the goal. Get, right. get as many friends. The goal of the church is to make believers mm -hmm. or to, disciples. To, to make disciples, to bring the truth of the word of God into people's lives so that they would become the disciples of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Disciples being those who are connected to him by his word. Yes. He, is the, he is the teacher, he is the master, and he is the only one that is to tell us what to do, right? Amen. Here in the third chapter, as we were going to see, the focus is truly on what you say. Yes. And before we go any further, I want to, I want to make sure that you understand that one of the biggest lies that the world has ever seen, and it has been highly and successfully propagated by the United States of America since its inception, after rebelling against England, mm -hmm. is that we have the freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is true, and it's important to understand this. Yes. Okay. Up until that time, people understood they didn't have that freedom of speech. You, you were, you were really concerned about what you said because there were consequences to what you said, and that's true today. Uh, let me say this, okay? About being a teacher, Jesus said in Matthew eighteen that whoever causes one of the little ones who believe in me to stumble. In other words, the children, we're called, called to be children of God. So if, if you're one and somebody causes you to stumble, it is better for him that a heavy millstone be hung around his neck and that he be drowned in the depth of the sea. That's a stricter judgment. That's a stricter judgment. I mean, Jesus is saying, if you teach something and lead somebody astray, lead one of his children, one of his little ones astray, you should put a big rock around your neck and throw yourself into the river and drown. That's a pretty strict judgment. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. There is such a consequence to this that you have to be so prayerful about what you say. David prayed, put a guard over my mouth. Yes. We need to know that we do not have freedom of speech. Jesus did not have freedom of speech. 
It says in John chapter 12 that he didn't speak anything that he had not heard from the Father. You can't say whatever you want, or you can, but then you will suffer the consequences for it. It's Peter wrote, and God, God caused the Apostle Peter to write, if any man speaks, let him speak as it were the utterances of God. What you should, what should be coming out of your mouth is what only, only what God has put into your heart. And what he's put into your heart is his love, and he's written his word on the tablets of your heart. That's what should be coming out of your mouth. Not your opinion. Your opinion has no weight. Your opinion has no power. There's no wisdom in your opinion. Well, the word of God is what has power. Right. And you have been entrusted with the word of God. So this has to really become a focus in our lives. And that's why James here is so completely focused on what we allow to come out of our mouths, right? Don't become a teacher unless you are prepared to suffer the consequences, the responsibilities, because God, if God entrusts you with that ministry, God holds you responsible for that ministry. And you, you had better be faithful and you had better be accurate in teaching in the Word of God. Listen, you know, I want to read, you know, as we get here, the next verse says, For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. That's what it says in the second verse. Yes. We all stumble in many ways, but God searches the heart. And if you are speaking what God has put in your heart, you'll be all right. Yes. But you can't teach your opinions. You can't teach what you would like to be the truth. Mm -hmm. You can only teach the truth. And you had better be very, very, very prayerful about that. And I'll tell you what. We all stumble, but the fact is, that we have, you know, what he said is that if, to John is if, if we are faithful to confess our sins, if we stumble and make a mistake and we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive. To forgive. Mm -hmm. But how many people have you affected if you if you spread that error? Right. You can't take those words back. No, you can't. Uh, I mean, the, the power of words, we could spend weeks and weeks and weeks just going through. As a matter of fact, let me say this, years ago, many years ago, back, back in the 80s, I wrote a little pamphlet called The Word on Words. Which, by the way, if you'd like, write to me at officeofbibletalk.com and I'll find it and I'll send, send you a copy of it, email you a copy of it. Because God has really given us, well, I, I don't want to ramble here, but the tongue of the righteous is the fountain of life. Mm -hmm. The words that God has put into your heart are words of life. You are to be speaking life to people. You are to bring, bringing the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus in every place. And he is the word. Yes. Right? Do you want to be a perfect man? Well, let me tell you, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount that we, you know, he said, be perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect. How can you do that? You do it by controlling your tongue. What it's he not, says, if anyone does not stumble in what, he, what says, he says, he's a perfect man. So that perfection that Jesus is talking about in the this, in this Sermon on the Mount is not about going to Mass often enough. It's not about tithing enough. It's not about, it's about what you allow to come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Because you have been entrusted with the blessed, holy word of God that is life-giving. You know, that's why Peter, uh, Paul, rather, the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy and said, all scripture, all of God's word, is God breathed, theonustos, and profitable. Theonustos, that's how we got life in the first place. God formed Adam out of the dust of the earth, and then he breathed life into him. If you were saved, you were saved, Peter says, by the imperishable seed of the word. God's word breathed life, eternal life, into you. This is what you've been entrusted with. You have the power of that word. How do you do it? By sharing God's word. Not by sharing your opinion, not by involved, getting involved in worldly things, but by speaking and bringing the truth of God's word into other people's lives. Don't stumble. Trust me. Be very, very prayerful with the word. The word of God has power. You know, a, a lot of people talk about this positive confession, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of churches have preached, you know, that you need to go around saying, I, you know, I want this, I want, and confessing. Confess it, yeah. 
Well, you, we are to be a people of confession. Yes. Yes. And that's what faith is all about. And then James is all about, you know, faith and, and applying that faith. Mm -hmm. um, the positive thinking. Oh. Confession. Faith in what? How did you get saved? Yeah, Romans Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Do you have it? Do you want to, I'll, I'll read it. I'll go find it real quick here. I mean, give me a second now. Romans 10, okay, okay, starting at verse 9. And let me ask you a question. If you've heard this verse before, and if you hang around with us at all, I know you've heard this verse. It says that if you confess with your mouth, right, you for, for, with the heart man believes, right? Let me just summarize. With the heart man believes. Yes. And with his mouth he confesses. With his mouth he confesses. So the question I have for you now, because we use that, but you know you gotta be you gotta be careful of how you handle the word. Mm -hmm. With the heart man believes what? What does it say in Romans 10? Okay? It says if you believe in your heart that God raised him, Jesus, from the dead, you shall be saved. If you believe that God raised him from the dead, and if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord. So that's the that's the belief and that's the confession. Right. So it's not a matter of confessing about okay, you know, I I go to a nice church, this it's not it's not it's, it has nothing to do with Christianity, it has everything to do with Christ. Yes. This belief that is saving grace that brings God's saving grace into your life is a fact that what you have to believe is that God raised Jesus from the dead. Why? Because that is the proof. That death has been conquered. Amen. Because Christianity is all about eternal life. Mm -hmm. And eternal life is all about the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead, our Father. Okay? That's the difference. That is the difference. That's the and then the confession that you have to have in your life is that Jesus is Lord. Now, that's easy to say, and you can put it on a t shirt, but the fact of the matter is, think about what Paul wrote in, in, second, in 1 Timothy, because he said that he had heard that this, this, that church, that Timothy had been confessing the good confession. Right. And then in the next verse, he talks about the fact that the good confession, Jesus had the good confession yes. before Pontius Pilate. Right. So what was the confession that Jesus made before Pontius Pilate? Think about this. He, his good confession was, because Pilate was astounded by the peace that Jesus right. had. He said, don't you understand I have the power to put you to death on the cross, that horrible death? And Jesus said, you would have no authority, no power, unless God, my Father, gave it to you. That's the That's what we have to be confessing in all of our life. Everything that goes on in your life, you have to understand that nothing goes on in your life that God hasn't permitted. Right. That he is in control. God is in control. It may look otherwise. You may think that the pandemic is in control. You may think that the economy is in control. You may think that the politics are in control. God is in control. Period. And if that's not your confession, you're not walking in faith. It's, it really is that simple. And you need to be walking in faith. He has you in the palm of his hand where no man can snatch you out. Nothing is out of control in your life. And God has purpose in everything, and he causes all things to work. To, if you love him, he causes all things to work together for good. To those who love him, to those who are called according to his purpose. Because he is working his will and his purpose. Amen. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not what we want. It's about what God is. God wants. Because God wants the best for us. And the best for us is not about having a nicer car. The, the best for us is having an eternal life with a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ for all eternity. Right. So if people are talking to you about this pandemic, if they're talking to you about all of the economy, about the politics, just say this. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Nothing's going to happen that he's not in charge of and in the Lord. And he has purpose because he is at work both to will and to work for his good pleasure. You know, I can tell you right now who's going to get elected. Well, call a news station. Who's, we're, we're right here and going into the election period, the presidential election cycle in the United States of America. You know who's going to get elected? Whoever God puts in place. Amen. He appoints the rulers. 
You may think that you do with your vote. No, God appoints them for his purpose. That's right. And he's not picking the one that you think is best. He's picking the one that will serve his purpose. Amen. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, let me get back to James. Thank you. So don't stumble in what you say. Be very prayerful. You know, David prayed, put a guard over my mouth. Yes. You you have to understand the importance and the power of your word of the no, I was gonna say of your word. Not your word does not have any power. God's word does, but God has written his word on the tablets of your heart, and he has put his love into your heart. So if you are confessing the word of God, you know that you can walk with assurance that you you are speaking. What is going to transpire? Because what's going to transpire is God's will. Whatever, however it plays out, whatever it is. Think about. I'm going to read verse three. Right? If we put the bits into the horse's mouth so that they may obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Have you ever ridden a horse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit, a little piece of metal they put in the horse's mouth. A big horse with a lot of power. Controls what he's going to do, what direction he's going to go in. Like the rudder in a ship. Which is exactly what he says next. Behold, the ships also, although they are so great and driven by strong winds, are still directed by a very small rudder, wherever the inclination of the pilot desires. So also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. Behold, how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. Mm. Our little tongue controls what goes on in our life. Yes. If we can grasp hold of this and understand it and believe it and put it into action in our lives, it will change your life. And nothing will change your life as much as controlling what comes out of your mouth. Think about this. I mean, what is coming out of your mouth now? We are going through some very trying times. I mean, for the past, how many months? Six months, seven months? There's been a worldwide pandemic. And it has been the news. Yes, it has. Many, many people have been infected. Many, many people have died. But the point of the matter is God is in control. You control what happens in your life by your mouth, saying, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. You already know he has a plan for you, and that plan is a plan for life. He's not going to do anything to harm you. He's, He's going to lead and guide us. That's what he promised. And he will lead and guide you. Paths of righteousness. And paths of righteousness. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Those paths of righteousness can seem bumpy at times. That's right. He can take you places you may not think you want to go. But I promise you, God is in control. Jesus is Lord. And the things that he does are meant to bring glory to him and work his plan. Mm. To work his purpose. To work his plan. To work his pleasure. Go read it in Philippians chapter 2. So now, how do you control your tongue? Well, by choosing to, to what comes in, what comes out of it. To listen. Well, you have to be quick. Thank you. you go ahead and say it because I was going to say it. Slow to speak. Because James started in the first chapter by saying, "Be be quick to hear, slow to speak, and, and slow to anger." Mm -hmm. You. Don't speak anything. That you, if you're not hearing from God, don't speak. You'd be better off walking around like a, like a mute and whatever people would think. But if, you, if you're not hearing from God, the simple truth is don't talk. Shut up your face. Do you realize that your tongue, that little tongue, it's a, how, big is a, you know, how big a part of your body is the tongue? controls the direction that your life takes. It's amazing. It's amazing, but it's true. Yeah. The fact is, I don't I don't know that most of us recognize that truth and are quick to take advantage of that truth. How do you take advantage of that truth? Not by confessing what you'd like, but by confessing what you know to be true. And what is true is that God the Father is in control. Yes, Nothing's going to happen in your whole life that he doesn't allow to happen. Mm -hmm. So the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts the great things. Behold, how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. 
I'm telling you what, you can you can start a roaring fire with your tongue. A fire that will warm you, that will burn away the dross. You know what I mean, it just made me think of the fact with this whole thing with the COVID, how many conspiracy theories are out there because of what people are saying. Because of what people are saying. That's I mean they're caught that's causing the fire. And where are you hearing all this? I don't want to sound like I'm an anti-Facebook person, but I'm telling you what, you better be prayerful because I see people, Facebook is a phenomenon. Can you imagine 100 years ago? Can you imagine 50 years ago? Can you imagine 40 years ago? Anybody having a concept of what Facebook has done? That gazillions of people, billions of people can literally go online and make themselves heard around the world. Instantaneously. Well, the problem with that is we're called to be slow to speak. That's right. I don't see that working out real well on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Or those other kinds of, you know, that same kind of uh, application on the internet. You better be prayerful about what you let come out of your mouth. Like I said, you are responsible for every careless word. That's what Jesus said. It comes out of your mouth. And there's power in, there's power in your words to do harm. Yes. There is power in God's word to do good. His words are life-giving. And healing. And, and healing. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily true of your words. No, no. But if what's coming out of your mouth is God's word, you're safe and secure. Mm -hmm. And you're bringing healing. You're bringing life. The, let me say it again. The tongue of the righteous is the fountain of life. That's the power that you have. Are we into positive confession? Well, I'm going to tell you. If you're, pro if you're professing and confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord, if you're bringing the word of God into the lives of other people, as very as, as positive as you can get. That's a good confession. Now, a lot of people may see it as judgment, um, but you know what? That's between them and God. That's not, don't you take it personal. Mm -hmm. The word of God is profitable for correction, for reproof, mm -hmm. for training in righteousness. So don't be afraid to bring that correction into people's lives speaking the truth in love. Not, not for condemnation, not to show somebody that you're smarter than they are or better than they are, but for the purpose of correction. Discipline. God disciplines those whom he loves. And it doesn't, it starts with a word. I mean, it should only take a word for you to be corrected by the, by the Lord. It shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't have to take you out to the back of the shed and get the switch. Get the switch, yeah. The tongue is a fire in the very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. You know what? James here does not seem to have a great opinion of what we do with our tongues. Because he probably saw, they didn't have Facebook back then, but he probably saw people running around saying things that they ought not to say. Okay? Like I said, there is no such thing as freedom of speech. I'm looking at my brother Mark here on video, and he loves that, you know, talk about the, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence. And America has been so responsible for bringing the concept of freedom of speech into the world. Mm -hmm. You don't have freedom of speech. You don't have freedom of speech. You are responsible for every word that comes out of your mouth. And God says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. I'm going to tell you something. I grew up as a, when I was a child, I didn't have freedom of speech. I, I grew up in an age, how long ago was it? When I said something bad as a child, I'd get my mouth washed out with soap. Yeah. But I think that happened to me once. Yeah, me too. And I learned my lesson. That doesn't mean I've never said anything bad since then, but I didn't get caught by my mommy, all right? But God was watching all the time, God and my father. So, so really be prayerful. Understand that God has entrusted you with his word, and it is a rudder that should steer your life, that brings you to that place where God walking that path of righteousness for his name's sake. Praise God. For every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. But no one can tame the tongue. 
It is restless, evil, and full of deadly poison. What? Well, I'll tell you, there's only one, and I promise you, the only hope you have about your tongue is called the Holy Spirit, who is sent to lead you into all truth. And he sent, sent to lead you into all truth, and he dwells within you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he should be, anytime that you start to say something that does not line up with God's word, with God's love, the Holy Spirit should be prodding you because he was sent to lead you into all truth. And you need to be attentive to that prodding. You need to know that you have the power of life and death in your tongue. You should be going around encouraging people, blessing people, bringing that, that life-giving word, that word of correction, that word of training righteousness into other people's lives. You don't have to be a teacher to do that. No. You know, it's, it's a, don't, not many of us should become teachers, but it says that all of us, today, as long as it's still called today, we should be encouraging one another. And you can encourage people with the word, but don't try and rule over people with the word. Amen. With our tongue, in verse 9 it says, with it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not to be this way. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brethren, produce olives, or vine produce figs? Neither can salt water produce fresh. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show his good behavior, his deeds, in the gentleness of wisdom. Well, you know, I, I really need to talk a lot about wisdom. I hear people talking about, you know, getting knowledge and understanding. But the thing of the matter is we need wisdom. Amen. And that's what we're going to pick up next week. But we, the simple fact is, one of the problems I've had with the church for a long, long time is the division within the church, mm. where they take the young people and separate them from the older people, where they take this group and separate it. You know, it's, it says in the Bible, and the Word of God says that strength resides in the young, right? Mm -hmm. But it talks about wisdom residing in the, the older people. So if you separate the one, if you take the, the, the power, the young, strength. and separate them from the wisdom, that's great danger. Yes. Because power without wisdom is as, as dangerous as it can be. But on the other hand, with the older people, if they have wisdom but don't have power, that's feeble. We need each other. We need that unification where we are together as one body. You don't need to have a youth group and in this group, you need to have a unified body of Christ that can work as God intended. So we'll, we, I promise you, we will talk more about that when we come back next week. Time flies when you're having fun. Put a guard over your mouth. But use that mouth that God has given you and the word that he has written on the tablets of your heart, the truth that he has put in your heart, the love that he's put in your heart, and take that and spread it. Spread it. And then it will go like a fire. It says, and only, there's a song, an old song, it only takes a spark to get the fire going. You have the power of life and death in your tongue. Use it wisely. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for what you have given us. We thank you for what you have entrusted us with. And Lord, by the power of your spirit dwelling within us, I pray that we use it for the glory of your name, for the blessing and benefit of others we come in contact with. Lord, help us to be a people that are different from the world. Lord, help us to be a visible presence of your son Christ Jesus in this dark and dying world. You have said that now we are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Let us live that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Well, it's been good to be with you. It's just time flies. Be with us again next week when we return and get into the balance of this, the third chapter of, of James. Till then, God bless you. Bye. 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 Amen.